Welcome back. It became clear very quickly that Saturday night's explosion in Manhattan was a terror attack and no accident. But New York's governor and New York City's mayor seemed to downplay it initially. There is no evidence at this point of a terror connection. I believe the mayor was saying there was no connection with international terrorism. And that is correct. Yesterday you were reluctant to call this an act of terrorism. Are you prepared now to say it was? We'll say more in the next few hours, but it's definitely leaning in that direction, the more we know. Yesterday, we had no evidence suggesting an international terrorist attack uh, stimulated by a foreign presence or a foreign body. Today, I believe we're going to find out that it was influenced by foreign forces. Mayor de Blasio appeared to finally accept the reality today. Based on the information we have now, we have every reason to believe this was an act of terror. President Obama did not comment until this morning. Folks around here, you know, they don't get scared. They're tough. They're resilient. Uh, they go about their business every single day. That's the kind of strength that is going to be absolutely critical, uh, not just in the days to come, but uh, in the years to come. By showing uh, those who want to do us harm that they will never beat us, by showing the entire world that as Americans we do not and never will give in to fear. All right, Gutfeld, what would you make of that? Unless it's a tea partier. Do you remember after the Times Square event, Mayor Bloomberg said, hey, it could be a tea partier upset with Obamacare. We don't want to stigmatize any aggrieved group unless it's somebody that is acceptable by the media. Plus, the media finds it easier to take firm stands on small things, like language versus actions. They will go after uh, 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 Donald Trump for saying it's a bomb, rather than getting really upset over the fact that it's a bomb itself. I saw an ad for President Obama on Anthony Bourdain's show. Mm -hmm. He was asked if you should ever put ketchup on a hot dog. He said unequivocally, no, never do that. It's a small example that shows how you can take tough, you can take tough decisions for abject silliness. But when it comes to real threats, you become this kind of ambivalent, like, mushy thing. You over, over language and not actions. But, man, you can just go off on a hot dog with ketchup. And the other thing that I love about this story, or the story, is no guns are involved in what happened in New Jersey, in New York. Uh, so it creates a challenge for the left. Uh, they can't deflect from their incompetence when dealing with terror to the NRA. They can't blame the NRA. It's a pressure cooker, not a bomb. So maybe they should go after Crate and Barrel. <laughs> okay, that was weird. But, but I like the ketchup analogy. The ketchup one is interesting. Like what? No, I, I, I like I, it. I see your point, and I, I think that you are possibly going to run for mayor of New York. We can convince you to do so at some point. Try me. Um, I'll be your speechwriter. I know you'll be good. De Blasio has the gift for understatement, or was he just hoping that it would turn out gift. to not be the case? He has the gift for cowardice. That's what he does. He is a feckless leader. He has definitely not done any good for New York City. This is a guy I think I can't wait for him to be out of office. And this was an example this weekend of how he handled this. And he is literally frightened of words. And tall and big as he is, he's frightened of words. Words scare him because he is trapped by ideology, which makes him an ineffectual, cowardly leader, and not one that a city like New York City uh, needs. And furthermore, to me, this is uh, not a war of narrative, uh, but this is a war of, you know, culture, of idea, of religion, let's be honest, and those that would follow radical Islamic terrorism and those that would not. People that crucify children and bury people alive and drown them in cages and light them in fire and those that would not. Or was de Blasio just trying to be calm and like, just like everything's okay, New York City. <laughs> well, you were reporting it live on the air on Sunday here's morning. Here's the paradox. In be their careful, effort, Tucker. In their effort to make sure that nobody gets too uptight about it, nobody gets too worried, they scare the hell out of all of us because their euphemism is read for what it is, which is dishonesty. They're lying to us and we know it. Contrast to Blasio's response to Governor Cuomo's response. They're not that different politically. But Cuomo's smart enough to understand this is a political loser. Mm -hmm. Cuomo wants to run for president if Hillary loses. Mm -hmm. And so he understands if he gets out there and equivocates, that's a, that's a deal killer. But why are they doing it? What are they afraid of? Right. They're afraid of the population of the United States. They downplayed the threat from radical Islam. Mm -hmm. 163 people killed or wounded in the last year in the United States. If consumer products killed 100 and wounded 163 people, it would be banned immediately. 
But they're afraid that if they tell the truth about it, the average person is so stupid and addicted to OxyContin that they will rise up and start murdering Muslims. They don't trust Americans. That's why they lie about it. What do you think, Juan? Interesting. I just think something so completely different. I mean, the fact is that you have, um, you know, a problem with the idea of Islam versus the United States. That you know, we don't want to feed that narrative. I don't think anybody wants to feed it. How about Islamism? Secondly, right. I think secondly, you have in this situation a real attempt to say this is what we know this is what we don't know to not get ahead of the story mm -hmm. to not feed uh, wrong expectations I mean the other day in Central Park you had a kid you know jump and there was an explosive device we don't know who planted that device I mean you could say oh it must have been this we had an airplane go down some time ago if you'll recall and some people jump oh yeah it must have been terrible we still don't know I, there was a fire on the plane apparently but it's a presumption it's the Presbyterians. Get, oh so no 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 <laughs> that's but again Tucker you're making the <laughs> right. oh it must be radical oh, group. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm radical right. group. No I, I am too but you know no but here's the interesting argument that that Juan presents which is what the media presents never jump to the conclusions unless of the conclusions that we share. Exactly. For example if you if you think it's terror you're jumping to conclusion but saying that it's not terror that's also a jump to a conclusion because then you always turn out to be wrong. Right. Also, it's, it's the same thing. What if you say you're you don't have to run, know? Guys. Oh, I say I don't know, but I can say I don't know. But I have a feeling when I see a bomb, I, and I have a feeling I know what it no, is. Yeah, 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 I don't say it. Yeah. And, and, and look at Germany and Angela Merkel and the, and the results of this political correctness and uncontrolled immigration. How, how's it working out over there? And then we're also we're also always worried about a backlash. I mean, imagine getting hit by a car and you're injured, and the first thing you worry about is, well, I hope the driver's premiums don't go up. That's not how you think. <laughs> that is how a backlash works. And we're going to have more from you because you're next. Uh, thankfully, there were no casualties, casualties <laughs> from this weekend's terror attacks. But 